you may ask, what is substitutionary atonement? Now, substitutionary atonement refers to Jesus Christ dying as the substitute for sinners. He replaced you. The scriptures teach that all men are sinners. Everyone is a sinner. If we check um, Romans 3.10 and downwards, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. So if you say you're, you're, you're clean, then you're lying to yourself. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Everybody is the same. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sculpture. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps, asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are their ways. And, their, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You see how, how the character of people is like? Everyone, everyone is against God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So, the penalty of our sinfulness is death. Because we are sinners, like we have seen, we are supposed to die. And Romans 6.23 tells us about this. Romans 6.23. It tells us about our penalty. Because we are sinners. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we know we are supposed to die. Now, that verse teaches us several things. Without Christ, we are going to die and spend an eternity in hell as payment for our sins. Death is, uh, in the scriptures refers to separation. Separation. Everyone will die, but uh, some will live in heaven with the Lord for eternity, while others will live in hell for eternity. The death spoken of here refers to the life in hell. However, the second thing this verse teaches us is that eternal life is available through Jesus Christ. This is what we call his substitutionary, uh, substitutionary atonement. Okay, He plans to give us eternal life. We have been separated from God. But now, his substitutionary atonement is him giving us that eternal life. Now, Jesus Christ died in our place. Okay? Jesus died in our place. When he was crucified on the cross, we deserve to be the ones placed on that cross to die because we were the ones who lived uh, sinful lives. But Christ took the punishment on himself in our place. He substituted himself for us and took what we rightly deserved. What we rightly deserved. See what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. See what the Bible says. For he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, this person who knew no sin, he was made sin so that you can have eternal life, can have his righteousness. Okay? So, he himself bore our sins in his body on this tree. So that we may die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. By his wounds, we have been healed. Now, here again, we see that Christ took the sins that we committed onto himself to pay the price for us. And uh, also a few verses later, we read that uh, in 1 Peter 3.18, 1 Peter 3.18,
it tells us something here. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us unto God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So Christ, not only do these verses teach us about the substitute that Christ was for us, but they also teach us that he was the atonement. He was the atonement. Okay? He was the atonement, meaning he satisfied the payment due for the sinfulness of man. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned even one day. He went at the cross. He took all the sins of every sinner. And he rose. And we, the Bible tells us that we rose with him. So we have fully his righteousness. He became our atonement. He became our atonement. He, he became that sin so that we can be righteous. You see, one more passage that talks about the substitutionary atonement is Isaiah 53, verses 5. Isaiah uh, 53, verse 5. It tells us about this substitutionary atonement. But he was wounded for our transgression. You see, he was not wounded for his transgression, but ours. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, this verse talks about the coming Christ who was to die on the cross for our sins. This is before Jesus came. So it was talking about the coming Christ who was to die on the cross for our sins. The prophecy is very detailed. And the crucifixion happened just as it was foretold. Exactly. So we can only pay the price of sin on our own by being punished and placed in hell for all eternity. Okay? For all eternity. But God's son, Jesus, Jesus, he came on earth to pay the price for our sins because he did this for us. Now we have the opportunity not only to have our sins forgiven, but to spend eternity with him. In order to do this, we must place our faith you see, we must place our faith in what Christ did on the cross. We cannot save ourselves. We need a substitute to take our place. We need that substitute to take our place. The death of Jesus Christ is that substitutionary atonement. We were separated, but through his death at the cross, we were reconciled. And now we can walk boldly towards heaven because of Christ. And that's why Jesus is the only way. And that's why we need the gospel for our salvation. This is the whole gospel. Gospel is basically putting our faith in what Jesus did for us at the cross. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It all speaks about how Christ laid his life for us. He died for us. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if you believe that Jesus, he became the substitutionary atonement for us. He was a propitiation for our sins. Then you are saved. All you need to do is confess to God what you believed. And you tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And you did this all for me so that I can be saved. You took my sins away. You took my part. You took what was rightly for me, death. And you made me a new creature. Jesus, I believe in you. And I believe that now you have become, I have become reconciled with you. Thank you for saving me. When you just do that and you tell him exactly what you believed, you believe and you tell him because you cannot confess what you don't know. 
then you have been saved. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also you can share to your friends. Let them get to understand what the Bible says when it says that Jesus became our atonement. Also, you can subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a new video because we do new videos every day to edify the body of Christ. God bless you and have a blessed time.